Across the country, the last Saturday in April is Independent Bookstore Day. There are about 1,700 of them in the U.S. A decade ago, they appeared to be on the verge of extinction. But in recent years, hundreds have opened. Tony DeCopel has more on America's indie bookstore boom. I am a mom. And I frequently lie to my children. <laughs> On a Thursday night in LaGrange, Illinois, comedy fans were all but rolling in the aisles, which is good news if you're selling what's in those aisles. That's right, this is a bookstore. Thanks so much for coming in. You help me draw the connection between books and comedy shows. Because we host a lot of different events. It's good for business, but it's also good for our community. Becky Anderson is a co-owner of Anderson Books, which began as a pharmacy and has been in her family for five generations. It's now a small, successful chain in the Chicago area, and it turns out that stores like this are helping Harvard Business School professor Ryan Raffaelli solve an economic mystery. I often say these are stories of hope. He set out to explain why the number of independent bookstores has been growing up every year since 2009 despite cheaper, more convenient ways to buy books online, in national chain stores, and with e-readers. What Raffaelli found is that successful bookstores you guys are members, you said? Yes. like Anderson's win with a local appeal, a curated selection, and as many as 500 events a year. But they've also been sensitive and had the ability to adapt and reactivate some of the values that were there that may have been muted in a race towards trying to have the cheapest and largest inventory. But books, real physical books, are still the main attraction. So many people spend so much time on devices that when it comes to reading for pleasure, they don't want to read from a device. The best thing about a book is you can't get email on it. Yeah, you can't put it up to your ear. <laughs> it's so good. Tony DeCopel, CBS News, New York.